today we will talk about like the the last and most important thing in deep learning. One we talk about is convolution neural network. The other one is recurrent neural network. This is the third one. The probably is not still arising, but we think attention will be the third like a large area of deep learning. So it's, it is playing more and more important in both computer vision and NLPs, especially NLPs. So let's think about the, how the brain works. If you look at different, you listen to some voice, you look at the images, different brain area will be active, activate to respond to the signals that we have. And then look back what we have, example, the sequence to sequence for machine translation last week. We can see that we have to translate the decoder to translate the first token. This word will be most likely to related to the, the first token of the encoder, the hello. We go to the next one. The next one maybe should be very close to the second token in the encoder. The last one, uh, period, will be very similar to the, related to the last one. Okay, so when we're decoding a different item in the decoder, which depends on the, deco depend, depends on the position, this item may be related to different items in the decoding, in the uh, encoding source sentence. So, but what, think about what we have to do for sequence, sequence model. The encoder using RN, which is condense all this sequential information into a single hidden state, which is a tensor or two tensors. Condense all the information there, and the decoder trying to find proper information from this tensor. But at that time, we don't know, we, we didn't know the locations. We maybe, the neural network maybe is able to put all these items, locations into the hidden state, but it's not explicit. So what the attention is trying to do is to make this selection more explicitly. So we want to explicitly se select the items we are interested. So attention layer, which is have something special here is called a memory. The memory is an input. So the memory here is actually a list of key value pairs. So, um, so here we have three keys, three values. So this is the memory input. The normal input we call it query. The idea here is that given a query, we want to find a key most likely similar to this query and the return is value as the output, which means this attention thinker like just a database. I give a query, we will find my, if my, my memory match the query with my key and I return the values. So this is the memory is what we learned before. We're trying to make, um, like you can just looking, if the memory is pretty good, you're just looking for the memory. But this selection is not differentiable, like, which is you cannot compute the gradients for the max operator. Because what we do here is that for all these keys, I compare the similarity between all the key and the queries, and then select the, the largest one, the largest score, which is a max operator. The max operator makes you cannot compute the gradients easily. Then what we can do? Well, um, as normal, I'll think about what we do for the loss function. We just change the hard max into soft max. So that's the idea. Then the overall idea is like given the query, I compute the similarity between the keys and the queries, using the soft max to get the score, and the return output, which is according related of the values. Okay, so this is, by this way, we explicitly select from the memory, given the query. So let's look at the math definition here. Given, a, assume the query is just a DQ length vector, it's a Q, and the memory have n key uh, value pairs from K1, V1 to Kn, Vn. So Ki is dk dimensional vector, and vi is the D view, uh, dv dimensional vector. The first step, given the query, what do we want to do here? We want to compute a1 to an. ai is the similarity between the ice key and the query. We call it, we call the alpha be the similarity uh, score function. Or it's called, just a call it score function, it's not necessarily similarity. Then give all the scores, we, can, we need softmax to compute the probability. That is, we are using this one to select. If the score is higher, which means we want to pick up the coding values, 
And if the score is slow, and it's small, and we probably ignore these values. At the end, we will return a value. This is just a weighted sum of all these values we have according to the softmax weight. So by this way, given the memory we have, which is usually constant, uh, like on some case, and depends on different query, we will pick up the values which keys are similar to the query. So this is a selection stage. We make it ex explicitly here. Okay, that's a key idea. But the thing is like, well, depends on different choices of the attention, uh, the, the alpha, which is the score function, we will get different attention layers. So here we want to first introduce two kinds of attention, layer, attention layers, and then we go to transformer, we get another one. The first one is the, the easiest one, it's called dot product attention. So assume assumptions here, the query and the key have the same length, all equals to a d-dimensional vectors. Then the similarity score just the inter, inner product between Q and K. The inner product kind of measure the similarity between like uh, two vectors. If you divide it by the long, it's actually the uh, angle between two vectors. But we, want, we don't want to divide by the long because it's much harder to compute the gradients. Um, in case the D is pretty large, you have very large dimensions, and we usually divide by the square root of D to make this a value is not too large. So then think about if we do a vectorized version, we have n queries, it's a Q, Q is each row is, uh, is a query, and n keys, each row is a key, and then we can compute all these uh, scores between each key value pair, each uh, key query pairs by just a Q multiplied by the transpose of K uh, divided by square root of one. So the idea here, this similarity score, like the score function is just the inner product. So that's an easy one. The second one, we're trying to learn, we're actually trying to learn these functions. What we're doing here, we, we make a learnable parameters. So for key, uh, query, and um, like WK is for the, uh, query, uh, for the key, like WQ is for the query. So WK is H by DK, and WQ is H by DQ. So what do we do here for the, in the following equation, uh, equation, given the query, we use WK to project it into a uh, H-length vector. And for the query, similarly, we're using WQ to project it into the H-dimension uh, vector. And found this thing together. So by this way, we don't need to assume the query and the key have the same length. So no matter what the length we have, we always project into the H-length uh, dimension. Then we add in, then together, put into activation function called tangent. And then we have another vector, which is H dimension vector. Doing the products, we give a scalar here. So this way, both WK, WQ, V are learnable. This is the parameters we will learn during the training. So this is why we call multi-layer perception attention because it's actually equals to a, a multi-layer uh, multi perception. So we, if we think about, we just concat the key and the query in the dimension end to get dk plus dq uh, the vector and fit into t a single hidden layer multi-layer perception. The hidden size is edge and we have no bias, uh, which you don't have bias turn here. The activation function for the hidden layer is tangent. Then we got the results. Also the, the upper size is equal to one, so we got a single scale, a scalar for the score. Okay, so that is called multi-layer perception attention. Now, um, we have two attentions. Now let's see how we can actually implement them. So any questions so far? Okay, so that's a, 